When I pull up in the spot, they be asking what I got. Yeah, it's for an extra mile, an extra inch for the dot. When I pull up in the spot, better show me what you got. Welcome to another smashing episode of Podcast with Soul. My name is Samuel Soul. And on this episode, man, we're going to be having a special edition. And we're going to be having KG XI all the way from Hanaju. Should I say Hanaju, though? Where you from? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's from from Hanaju. It's from Hanaju. That's good, man. That's good, man. It's good. I'm nice, bro. It's good. Man. Ah, good, good, good. Man. Oh, yeah, man. So basically, you're the only rapper who made it out of the hood so far. Yeah, if you can say. But it's not, it's not from the music. <laughs> <laughs> it's not from the music. Don't mislead the people. Though. I'm just fortunate to have a job that allows me to actually move out of the yeah. world. Yeah. Okay, uh, let's just actually start from the beginning. The, uh, you from being a soccer player to actually getting into music and how everything just started. How How is it for you? Living soccer, going into music and yes. becoming a biggest artist in the world. <laughs> that's a very <really laughs> heavy title, bro. That's a heavy, that's a heavy title, now, nah, bro. Um, yeah, man. Football has just been my life since I was young. Born into it. Um, it's all I know. In the hood, that's all we know. It's yeah, the only sport. Yeah, that's the only sport, sport, yeah, yeah, the sport they play in the hood, you know. So, um, yeah, man. Football was my life. I played for. I played under Costa Papich. I don't know if you remember. Yeah, I remember. I remember. Yeah. Remember. yeah Played under Dennis Lotta, uh, may so rest in peace. Um, I played at Vets Juniors, was in trial at Bedvest before the injury happened. So you, you got an injury? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jeez, man. Yeah, yeah. 2014. It's quite hectic, man. It was right before everything was gonna really pop for the boy, you know. So it was a tough one to take. Ended up failing um, first year. And I'd been away from the hood for like six years at most, you know. And when I left the hood, I was this promising soccer talent, you know. Then I come back six years later from boarding school and raising whatnot. And I don't play football no more. I don't have the same friends in the hood no more. You know? Everybody's, grown. Everybody's grown. Everybody has grown and shit, you know. So it's like starting life all over again. And now having to prove myself as something else either than a failed football player, yeah, yeah. you know, because people in the hood, some people in the hood really do see it like that, you know, so, um, but it, that's how it is, though, it's yeah, like, yeah, uh, yeah, I understand the full information, what went down and what yeah, happened, yeah, 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 people, people always assume shit, you know, but anyway, I'm back in the hood, um, I'm by the field watching football, sometimes playing here and there. Then I get introduced to this um, to this to this dude Ishmiza Ishmiza is a um, he he makes music he's like pushing in the music making this music he had a song at the time off the party and he was just about to shoot you know so I get introduced to his stuff right after soccer practice and play he he's actually playing me his music and whatnot tells me he's shooting a music video I'm like man let me be a director you know. So you had a direct video. Video direct, let me come direct your video, you know. Then cool, I show up, Take Two is there. I meet Take Two for the first time making on productions. He's doing quite well for himself, man. I'm proud of my boy. Um yeah, I meet him for the first time. So now we start this movement where we separate entities but we really just like pushing each other and whatnot. Sure, and um we shoot the after party uh, music video, then Shmizo wants to make a, a remix for it. In, mind you, I wanted to be like his manager, I wanted to just push him where, where I can, you know. Then he's like, I want to do a remix. I'm like, man, let me just do a verse, bro. Let me just fuck around, do a verse, you know. That's when I laced my first song back in the hood, you know. So he's, he was actually the first person to actually give you an opportunity to lace a verse. Yeah, for song. sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Back in the hood, this is the only person I knew that was, was, was making music at the time, time, you know. Then just based off the music I made with him that created buzz around the hood and everybody else started knowing about me and whatnot. Um, but it was still a very hard transition, man. I remember like the first time I remember we performing a club ace. And we performed it. Yeah, Club Ace, yeah, yeah, yeah. We were performing there, um performing Buzabu Setal. I still remember this thing though though. This nigga was like 
I think he was drunk or whatever, you know. Yeah. It stuck. But a couple of year a couple of years later he was giving me dabs. So it <laughs> But that's how it that's how it goes. It's how it yeah. goes. That's how it goes anyway, man. Um but it was it was really hard just like trying to make a name for myself as as a musician now because nobody knows me first and foremost. Yeah. I spent like six years away from the hood. Um I have no friends, so I don't really have the necessary push and whatnot. And the friends I still have, they still need to adjust to the fact that I now make music, you know. Yeah. They still need to adjust to that, but you know, we, we, we've come a long way, man. My boys, my boys are like my, my number one supporters right now, anyway. Um, it was tough, but I grew tra traction around the hood, then uh, Cosmo City caught on through um, a Jukes feature. Jukes had a radio show, Saturday Cyphers and whatnot. So he pulled me to the side, I think we were at a show pulls me to the side he's like man you, you you're nice bro you know you're doing something you know you're doing something man i wanna i, I got this song it's called cosmo rocks now it's like nigga i'm from honey juke and he's like yeah i know <laughs> and then, but i want then, you on this song you know you went and lace the you this song. i want you i want you to to lace this verse so he he picks me and my boy speak out we go to kahisa bro we go to way to kahisa to record yeah. this song he gets us cut drunk but it was an experience, you know, then we come back, he drops the song, we shoot the video with TikTok. Uh that song, that song went wild. So, so what you're saying is that uh, out of all the reps in that you at the time, he decided to pick you. You were like the, yeah, yeah, yeah. the bash rep at the time. Or yeah. did you guys that's decide, that's decide who's going? I don't know. On? I don't know. That's so what he just he decided. <laughs> <laughs> that's what he said, yeah. And I saw there was a podcast, um, they were like Jukes made me and whatnot. Nah, fuck that. <laughs> Jukes, Jukes is my brother for sure. He didn't make me. I already had like my own little movement okay, going. Jukes, really push yeah. time, yeah. It's just that Jukes opened me to a wider audience. You know, he opened you really, from he, he, you being from high Jukes, Jukes, actually yeah. getting a platform in Cosmo. Cosmo. Yeah, yeah. To a point where people actually thought for to to some point I was like doing so so many features, like dropping so many yeah. songs. People thought I was from Cosmo. I'd come here at a deep sleep do a show and people would introduce me as a person from Cosmo, the from Cosmo. before I, I, I do my thing I always make sure that people know where, where exactly the, 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 the boys from you know but yeah man then after Cosmo rocks it it, it took it took on man I started That's dropping my own music like already, I yeah. dropped Dirk my first tape yeah. Club Ace was full bro Club Ace was full when I launched that then dog it was crazy bro um, then I followed up with 24 years of love in a trap and i did a young ep um conversations with an angel but oh, oh those three tapes was just me trying to find myself me trying, trying to see what i can rap you know then um i made v beats 2018 okay. or late late 2017 or early 2018 i made i made v beats start working with v beats for the first time i dropped transitions and because i i yeah. only i remember uh, one time when I was on socials scrolling through that's when yeah. I came across your sound yeah. and the first tape that was the first tape that I had from you then I was like okay who's this guy and also the producer I was like who's this who's V Beats because at that time I only knew a few cats in the north who were doing who were making it big in terms of um, rap and all that and the sound was different so I was like okay who's this that's when I started following through the music like through uh, the thing yeah that's where a very beautiful partnership started man V Beats just knows my sound bro I, I, I know I just go to the studio there, he plays the beat, I, I lace my vocals, and I'm mice, bro. I'm mice, dog. I go do my thing, step outside, be on my phone, or whatever. I know he's going to get it right. He, he knows my sound, he knows exactly how my verse needs to come out, he knows how my vocals and the hook need to come out and everything. So I dropped Transitions. Transition had amazing tracks, bro. They had like Purple yeah. Drank, and I, I shot the video with, with Nano. That video was fire, bro. That video was so fire. Nano somehow managed to get um UK YouTuber, what's his Mudzy Media. Because I remember yeah, seeing yeah. it on the, uh, the UK YouTuber. I was like, yeah, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that's how happened. we dropped it. It was big for us, though. Like, we had a nigga from the So UK. it was actually like um your first video to no. actually drop. We had, we had, bro. I, I mean, on, working, your, on your on your solo project, I've been mean, on that on, on transitions. It was. It was though. Yeah, on transitions. Still the only video that you dropped from there. Ah, uh, shit. Yeah, probably. Like I, I have so many songs, bro, and like, 
Nano would tell you, bro. Nano would tell you, take the, like, I, I text these guys, bro. Yo, I need to shoot for this, you know? And then, obviously, we pay the get it gets yeah. into, 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 into place and whatnot. And certain things you can't do. But it's always, like, every time I hit them up again, it's it not like, oh, that other song I spoke it. about, we need to shoot that. It's like, shit, nigga, listen to this new, new shit I got. Let's shoot for it, you know? It's, it's that type of thing, bro. Yeah. Yeah, that's actually but, um. But yeah. from the tape, you actually went and dropped the first your debut album. Yes, sir. Which at the time, um, I think you were one of the few artists in the north to actually work on a full album at the time. Ah, uh, bro, I don't know. I think I think guys were dropping albums. They just weren't calling them albums. Or they just calling them because people and... had had projects, bro. You know, people had projects, very great projects. Um, Stem and them were dropping videos, dropping. Uh, I, I, I tried as hard as I could to like study the game, you know. I, I know I know Hitman was 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 dropping, but I I I didn't know if he had like tapes or whatnot. But I know recently he started dropping tapes. Yeah, he did have a whole other tape at the time. Yeah. He was I think at some point he was the only artist in the north with the biggest catalog. No, I saw I saw that because I used to like I used to study the yeah. game, dog. See who who's doing what and whatnot. Like he was doing some great things. And some charity work and whatnot, drop them out. I paid attention, I saw Melody video and whatnot. Yeah, but anyway, yeah. like at the time, people are still dropping tapes, man. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Then I dropped Sincerely Yours Truly. I called it an album because my understanding of, of music at the time was like, you know what? An album is when you have a story from like track one, track one to, to the, the last track, track, last track yeah. you know? A mixtape is when you just put different right, yeah, music you that you have, have, you know. Yeah. So I had I had this project that told my story, you know, told my story, and somewhere in between, I, I stepped into my friend's shoes and told a stories, you know. So that album was very special. It came from a very dark place too, because I was going through it, you know. <laughs> and really and, and how, long, how long did it take you to actually write the album? Uh. The first song I recorded for that album was when I dropped. Uh, no, 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 it was when I finished, finished transitions and transitions. I sat with it for like six or seven months before I dropped it. Okay. Then, so six or seven months before that, I started working on Sincerely Yours Truly. Then transitions dropped in twenty eighteen. And uh, since it was truly in 2019, so I said yeah. it for like a good year and eight months. Jeez, dog, not why yeah. I just dropped the project. I remember there was a time where I actually sent you a voice when after listening to your tape. The next thing, boom, mm-hmm. it's in the album. Yeah. I'm like, damn, yeah, yeah. I appreciated the love, dog. You know, like having to, to, to have no, nobody know you, to having people really fuck with you like that. It, it was dope, man. I remember they even had like WhatsApp groups back in the day with my Cosmo C yeah, WhatsApp groups. So, so, yeah. I put my music on there, dog, and people fucked with it, dog. People fucked with it, so it worked out, man. Because because yeah. at the time it was actually something different. Um, yeah. We had okay, we already had artists were dropping music, but the sound that you dropped was a bit different from what we normally. It's my sound. <laughs> <laughs> I, th- I think that's what actually made the, uh, the the album people to actually notice you be like, oh, who's this guy? KG. Then you went from dropping that album and everybody started to know who you are. And you took it album, album. That album is still my highest streaming album. I think it's sitting on top twelve thousand streams on on Spotify. On Spotify. Damn. So so Spotify is sitting on probably thirty five thousand now. On all plus, your project all plus plus on all my catalogs there. On Spotify I only put up from transitions to so a recent man. project which is like four projects, so I'm sitting on thirty. It, it, it's dope, man. You know, you know, it's it's really great because even now, you're talking from that I dropped, crew realities of yeah. winning nothing, the mixtape. What was the, what was the motivation behind that the, the tape? Because even the title itself it says a lot. Like it's, it's crown. Just, if you abbreviate yeah, it, it's, it's crown. crown. It's yes. a crown on your head. And you know how a king wears a crown on his mm-hmm. head, and it looks good. You know. But the king goes back home and it's him alone. It's not a show no more. Yeah. Nobody's trying to take pictures. Nobody's bowing down to him and whatnot. It's him alone and he's he faces his demons type of shit though. Yeah, so that's, that's what, what the whole thing is about. Like it's a cruel reality of winning nothing. Because when you step out with this crown, 
it looks like you win and you're winning a lot. You know, at, that time, you're winning at, the, at that time, you're probably going through the worst of times internally, you back home with the family, you really want to talk about shit. So that's what I always base my music on, though, like real life shit. Things that so I but know. at the time when you wrote the tape, was it something that you actually go through or you just uh, from other people's experiences? Then you just it's always it's always a, a balance between the two between, between the yeah. two. It's always a balance. So at the time you're in a dark space when you write the tale. Yeah. I don't I don't like talking a lot about the shit that I do, so I just put it on the music. On the music guy. So it's always gonna come from a real perspective. It's probably something I went through two two days ago, something I went through five years okay. ago. You know, but it's 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 whatever whatever the, the music directs you to go though. Yeah. So after the tape, you dropped the tape and you disappeared for like a good two years, if I'm not mistaken. Was it a two year or one year? Probably two years. Then you took a break, then everybody else was like, where's KG at the time? Like, where, where's uh, I, don't think, I don't think everybody thought. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you put in so much music that think, nobody I noticed. I don't think I'm done. I, don't, I, don't, yeah, I also yeah. don't think they really noticed because you put, you put up uh, so much music at the time yeah. and you took a break from there. Yeah, life, life took its toll on a nigga, man. Yeah, yeah, I took a, it was even, it was not even, it was not a planned break, but it was also not a forced break. It's just, it something, just something that, that you, you it know, happened. It was just something that happened that, um, my life changed, you know, things started going on a little bit, moved out the, the hood, you know, and, yeah. um, and, uh, well, you know, now you like 27 bro you know what i'm saying 27 now you're trying to you're trying to be more more serious about things you know take take things a bit more serious so a lot of that comes into play so it's the work it's the family time it's the relationships it's the music you know, also. It, the music took a, this time the music took a very painful painful knock though because but how do you balance the whole the four like the four how do you balance it you know from your, uh, your family music relationships work how do you balance that man? I like i don't i just wake up and things happen because you're always at all these shows that you're booked to perform at well it's been different like uh, with this break that i took with me being silent and or even on social media and i thought it's been different man i'm not that's what i'm saying like there's probably like five people right now that are waiting for more music but you know what i i, I will still <laughs> but, drop i will but, still but, drop but like, but, but like those five people, five people. How those five, five people? people it could be less <laughs> it could be more could it, it, could it should be more okay yeah, cool but for, 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 for the uh, for the sake of this podcast let's say it's five people <laughs> let's say it's five people yeah. i will still drop the music and those five people will appreciate it and for me that's all that matters that's all that matters you know? But I did. I did take the break. I I, I went through life. Took a took a took a few ups. Took a took a, a few downs as well. But we still up. We still blessed, you know. And you learn. And and that also like it helps the music in a way because it's an experience. Yeah, which, you know? is, which is true. You know, there was yeah. there was a song that you dropped. Dropped. Um, Tightly human. I it, then you dropped the visual. What was the story all about that? Like, human human was about being human you know like i'm a man you a woman like you know what i'm saying if you a girl you a woman and like we all human we, yeah. there's mistakes that we make you know there's there's challenges that we all go through and there's different ways that we we, we, we overcome these situations and whatnot so that was just an admission you know, routine you know what man i might i may have shit figured out today but understand when yeah. it all goes down tomorrow you know that i'm human yeah and i saw the visuals um have. who produced the visuals visuals was abuti tony one abuti of my tony. boys yeah, yeah abuti one of my boys abuti tony yeah man that's that's my brother um yeah so i shoot i shoot with abuti tony take to and then Nano. yeah those, those are the three producers yeah. like People that you actually work with. Yeah. When it comes to visuals, you only work with those yeah. people. Abu Tony owns my life. He, he still has a documentary. We started like so. Yeah, I, I heard that the time when you talk about having a documentary that you're already on. Yeah. How how long is it? Is that how many hours? Yeah, man, it's probably thirty hours. Because yeah, I, I, I heard you said. Uh, no, we took hours. a break. You know how how I took a break with the music. Yeah. 
But that also took a knock because my 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 Brody was you know pushing his own his thing. Own thing. But but like when are you? Um, because I remember you once promised that you're gonna drop the the whole documentary before you drop the album, yeah. but you never dropped it. You dropped the album. Yeah, it'll probably drop when 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 my kids are like ten years old. <laughs> so we shouldn't expect it in time. No, so. I don't expect it. We we spoke about it. We like nah, nah, mm-hmm. fuck it, fuck. It'll be worth more at a later stage. God willingly, everything goes according to them. We went big enough, but but um, like um, writing your album, yeah, there's just too many. Cause I've I've listened to the album and I could relate. I relate to actually some of the songs I do relate to the album. And like you said, that you most time when you write, you write based on uh, your experience and other people's experiences. But like, how do you find the balance between the two? You know telling your stories and telling somebody else's story a lot of the times my story is your story 99 percent of the time i mean you a nigga i'm a nigga dog a girl will fuck you over the same way that a girl <laughs> fucks <laughs> you over you know what i'm saying no, <laughs> and if i put that in the music you'll be late so automatically yeah. that's that's your story and my story so that's how it is man but but going back um weren't you scared actually that was your second project working with bbs right yeah but weren't you scared that yeah. um, when you dropped the album, how people are going to receive the album? Nah, I was not scared. I was I was not scared. Like I, it was therapy. Though. That album was yeah. therapy for me. Though. I I wrote it during, during one of my darkest times, bro. Anybody who was dog. Nah, it didn't even work out. It was difficult, bro. Like when I when I wrote that, it was during one of my darkest hours. Darkest hours, you know. Like a lot of things happened during the the whole process of that album. And like I say, I, I I listened to it for over a year, bro. So by the time I dropped it, You're I was like bored it. of it. Okay. So I was already expecting. Oh, you know what? If but people are bored by this project, it's cool. I'm bored as by as long as you get the story you know out there. Let me just let me just drop it. It's irritating me now. It's spending too much time in my <laughs> library and not out there. So I drop it. And, and you went at time and worked on a couple of features, which um there's this other one where it's uh, honest diabolics uh Excel remix. Yeah. Where there's too much debate around it, who had the best verse and all that, you know. Me personally, you know, your verse was dope. It was dope. Yeah. I always go with Ziggy's verse, but your verse is also dope and I still don't understand why you were like the you were the first one to draw to actually yeah. I didn't understand that logic know. behind that. Like why would they let you go first if they could have let you know the others? Yeah. Man, I, I fucks with Ziggy man. Ziggy's my boy. Ziggy is great. But Ziggy knows he comes second. I will always go with Ziggy's <laughs> verse. <laughs> right off so, the mic. So according to you, your verse was like the best verse in that song. Then there was Ziggy, then there was uh, everybody else. Yeah. Because even Diabolic himself, he had like a nice verse, you know. Diabolic had a nice Actually, verse. everybody, it it everybody is, pulled that verse. Everybody pulled through yeah, over the yeah, for sure. Just that, that those verse which, which we yeah. didn't But that was not the whole relate. point. That was not the yeah. whole point of the, yeah. of the song, you know. It was not to, 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 to compare the verses and whatnot. But how do you come about the the feature? Uh like I said earlier, Jorge, like I, I studied, bro. I studied the game. I saw honest diabolic music sent friend request on oh, it. Like yeah, he, can, he drops exhale. I comment on it like yo man, this shit is fire. Yeah, because you know? it was actually a fire. Yeah, and like, fire this shit is fire. Is fire. Then uh, that's how we started talking. Then, then, then I'm like, you know what, dog, the, the day you decide to do a remix, just let me know. Then months went by. I'm like, ah, it's not gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> it's, not gonna happen. <laughs> it's not gonna happen. This guy forgot, bro. Because it was a Because it was a he starts, he, starts, he starts promoting the remix, dog. He starts promoting the remix. No word. He doesn't hit me up, no shit though. He, I see, I see, uh, exhale remix coming soon, and she like you that. See the I go to my inbox, nothing though. This nigga ain't hitting me up for no worse, bro. But eventually, uh, he hits me up like, yo, dog, you know, you need to pull through. I remember I didn't have the beat, so I listened to the original. Yeah, I was at home and I write a verse. Oh, that's how you wrote your verse. I wrote my verse. I wrote my verse. I'm like, ah, fuck it not feeling it so the day of the recording 
I get a cab from Honey Drew. Come on, man. Speak so. Get my headsets. Backseat. Play the original. I write my verse. I get them like I'm ready. Get there, I'm ready, dog. A bunch of niggas. First time I meet them, dog. When you care. Give them a lemon top. I didn't know them like that at the time, dog. I knew them because I saw them on these social media platforms when I was following them. But it wasn't really like weren't you scared, nervous about going to in, in a song with people that you don't really know. Um KG except bro. <laughs> <laughs> nah dog. It was it was not that. It was just like okay, let's see what happens. I really hoped I don't get killed though. <laughs> like on the verse. I know it was not yeah. about that. It was about but like Did you actually decide that your verse should be the first verse? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was that? What was that? You decided that I'll be like, yeah, let me just go first. Set the standard. The bar went high. The thing is, if you start with a bad verse, the listener might not even get to verse number four, and that's where the fire verses start. That's always the case. If the you know what I'm saying? If the first two verses throw you off completely, you skip, dog. You go to the next song. Yeah, let's go. You know. But for you, it was actually about balancing the both. Like you started with the dope bass. Balancing the song, then there was other people. That I thought, I game. thought, I thought the verses after me would be dope on the record. You know? Jeez, dog. I thought. Well, that's what you thought. <laughs> and you went and went with an on another joint with that boy link. Yeah, yeah. Well, what was it? What was uh, it? Uh, hold you, hold you up, or no? Uh, uh, shit, no. Before hold you down, I did a joint on his tape. That boy link is my nigga, man. That boy link is my nigga. Uh, what is it? Uh, the D pause. Yeah. The D, pause. <laughs> <laughs> the deep pose, bro. And there was a time uh, where you guys actually hold you down. Hold yeah. you down. After that, you guys promised that you're gonna work on a joint project, an EP. I remember, I remember seeing that that you guys are gonna work on a joint project, which is gonna be. Yo, that bollock, if you're that watching this, that bollock, if you're watching this, answer the people, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I don't got the answers, so. <laughs> but he did. He did. I he did actually say that. Um, didn't know what really happened at the time because no, so it's just, it's it's just scheduling and, things, and you also focused on your it's just scheduling diabolic i think diabolic took a took a break same time that i did also oh, you guys decided that you no, we didn't decide it, right? it was just ironic that he was going through some shit the same time that i was going through so you shit. guys took a break the project never happened it, it, it was it was not even in the talks like that you know we but just wanted to make music it was just a yo we but gotta, i think i want to post saying you yeah, guys yeah, yeah 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 you guys are cooking i like hey, no, cooking? we wanted to like we wanted to 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 get together shoot do do a couple of songs oh, a couple of songs but like, the project. But like because of different schedules i was busy he was, was busy, busy at the time. Was when you're free busy when he's free you're busy yeah but that's my that's my dude because i thought you guys were like we're cooking like uh, maybe can hold you because it's still, still time go i didn't need a still time like if he's watching right now and if he wants to do it let's go my guy so you guys are like definitely discreet. um that's free to definitely want to work on the channel yeah. project yeah. and actually i mean you heard hold you down though that shit was fun yeah, you had ziggy fine. on it you heard ziggy's back ends on the hook I actually yeah, yeah, so, that, so that was Ziggy at the time. That was Ziggy. Yeah. That was Ziggy on the back end. Yeah, that my boy could die. Could die who's on the beat as well. Because that yeah. that joint is actually fire. From you that when joint he, was a real team team effort though. Like could die was on the pre pre hook. Yeah. Then I was on the hook, then, then there was Ziggy was on the on the back ends. Yeah, and obviously that's me and that about his verses and whatnot. That's pretty good. That was that was a fire, fire. I see you also get like uh beats yeah. from um International beats, if you may put it that way. <laughs> Who's that guy? Uh, your guy from Zim. That J Mac. J Mac. Like J Mac. My brother J Mac. Getting yeah. like uh, beats from J Mac. J Mac found me on Instagram, man. I don't know how, but it was listening to your to your son. Found me on Instagram, and he's like, "Man, your shit is fire, bro." Did he just send you a beats? pack? He sends me a pack. Um, I recorded a song called When They Doubted. Send yeah. it back to him. He's like, shit, bro. I'm going to send you more shit. He ended up sending me more shit, dog. He's the, um, like 90% of the, the mixtape I dropped recently. Honey Juice Best Export. I remember when you dropped uh, Honey Juice uh, Best Export. Yeah, yeah. What was the tape? They've been tackling stuff. Like, drinks are bad. It says a lot of things. Honey Juice Best Export. It's just like. 
when I came, the first time people heard of me, yeah. like on 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 Cosmo Rocks, yeah. The first line I say is I'm a honey juice based steaks boy, Z side of my pest boy, love pack on my dashboard. Russian bear with no dashboard and it goes on, you know what I'm saying? Like but that first line I'm honey juice yeah. based export and this the first time people hear of me. And like who's this guy? Who's this Tell guy, them straight up, nigga. I'm honey juice based export. I don't care if you know about me or not, but that's what I am. I'm the best thing to come out this place, you know what I'm saying? So out of so, out of all those other rappers in honey juice, you just found like, you know what? I'm like the best at this point. Not necessarily. Your music I don't actually wanna, made I don't you. Wanna, I don't want to. I don't want to start. With <laughs> I don't want to start with anything. Obviously, there's people that felt like that, and there was a phase where we had diss tracks back and forth back and, and whatnot. Forth. But um, but in terms of quality, for me, it's, it's never. Sound, for me, like it's never. For me, it's never been like that though. Like everything that I did, as far as like the movement with Excite Gang, now Fly Boat, and um, like the music and whatnot is because of the life that i was exposed to when i was away from the hood like i saw the life out there and whatnot so yeah, what i like what i did when i came back home when i come back to the hood i was like you know what man i want to push so that these guys see a different different view different vision when it comes to music yeah i feel like a lot of people were, were like they wanted to do it but they, to me they couldn't do it in the hood you know they like had no ideas on how they could send it up you know what i'm saying i remember there was a conversation they can call cap if they want to but they know it's not cap there was a conversation that um sai and uh, uh diabolic started about investing in your craft and whatnot just to create yeah, just to create, yeah. kill and whatnot and um then there was a whole solution with the, who's gonna listen to it. People in the hood don't go no, yeah. I choose and all that. I remember the conversation. I was actually, yeah, you know I was actually part of one of the yeah, people in that conversation. Why, why are you guys being bougie type of thing? Yeah. I put my music on there. That body put his music on there. It, did, it did good. It did good. You know what I'm saying? It did very good. Now, a little bit by a little bit, people are hopping onto that way. We quiet about it. It's, it's so good. cool because. The whole idea was to get everybody on it in the first place, you know. They just thought we was crazy when it started, you know. But certain songs where they are just for you, purely for therapy. Um, you lace it and you play it for you, and it's amazing. Like if you could put it out, it's, it, it could it could do wonders. Yeah, but people, at the yeah. same time, it's like, nah, I'm gonna be a little selfish with this one. It's, it's <laughs> just gonna keep it to myself. So yeah. So you definitely want to drive, drop next year. This year we're looking. Not definitely. I'm not making promises, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not making promises. 2021, I didn't drop anything at all. I remember that. Yeah. And then I came. This year you dropped. I dropped, but because I hadn't dropped in quite some time and I've been silent, it didn't do quite as well as the previous the projects. Previous project. Even though it's doing quite good, it's not as well as the. So other you would say that uh, consistently matters in in in, in the rap game. Yeah, you gotta be consistent, bro. You gotta be consistent, but we all do it for different reasons, you know. To to some people, this is all there is to it, you know. Yeah. This is all they they do. This is all there really is to it for them. But you get people like me. I still got a job, you know. Well, you have to and do it. I cannot neglect that because it pays for music does not design. pay none of my bills, bro. <laughs> Jeez, bro. All it does is tax me, but you know. So, so it, it, you get people like me where it's just like, I'm, I'm doing music because I love it, you know. But how long does it take for music to actually start paying you off? And for as long as you, you fucking push it and do the right moves. That's when you're not, if you're not yeah. moving right, or if you're not putting yourself in positions where you can move right and whatnot, it will, it will not happen. That's why you're not gonna get paid. That's why you're not gonna get paid because. Why am I paying? Where the fuck do I know you from? You know, that's 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 what my challenge is because I don't have the time to really put myself out there anymore. You know, um, you to it was easier. It was easier when I first got into the scene because I was still in school, I was still in college, so I had a shit of time, time. You know, but now it's responsibility. But don't you, have 11, you have eleven projects out. I have ten. Ten. It's actually ten, right? So you're gonna put out your eleventh if it happens. Yeah, Project XI. <laughs> Damn. 
So yeah. in that in that in that yeah. uh, ten project, it's in a period of how many years? Uh, five. Five years since 2017. The first project dropped 20, 23rd of January 2017. Jeez, so exactly. the first project dropped. So five years, ten project. Yeah. So if we get so ten years, we're going to get between the project. Yeah. Two projects per year. Can really yeah, drop man, two I have a shitload of projects and I would still have some that haven't dropped yet, you know. If I could put all the songs that I've done that I've never put so far, it could, yeah. it, could, it could have gone to maybe four four projects or whatever. Still have a joint EP on the repeat that's still sitting there. It's fire. That's pretty dope. It's fire. I don't know if that's when is it gonna drop or we're gonna do because I see V, it's, uh, he's about to drop a yellow tape. Is yeah. it yellow tape five? Yeah, yellow tape five. Yeah, the most consistent. So if you you're not on the yellow tape five, it means you're not the best in in. No, in the no, no. What he does, what he does is is, is um, introduce people to people, like artists okay. to to his audience. That's what that's what I think the yellow tape is like. It's it's V beat and everybody else. Yeah, that he takes with that he feels that people need to be introduced to and whatnot, you know, because that's what he does. What he does is he helps artists. The people go to his studio, they record. Because I, I, I remember the first time I had um, there's a girl called uh, Lundi J. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had it, I had her from him. That's yeah. when I realized, okay, she's fire. Yeah, she's, she's fire. Lundi J is fire, man. I have a song with her. I wish we could have done more. I wish when we could still dropping? do more. It's it's out. We dropped it a couple of years ago on Valentine's. It was yeah. a, one of those Valentine's joy. Yeah, it, it it dropped early. I forgot what it was. What is it? Gone away. Yeah, gone, yeah, away. gone away. Did I did that with her? I wish I wish I could do more music with Lonely. Or I wish we could have done more music. You never know. Could it could still happen. Yeah, it could still happen. Um, can drop a joint project. Who knows? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even even like with Icy. Yeah, because you remember at some point you were working with Icy. Still working. Icy is still family. Mm -hmm. The thing is with Flamo Gang is we're not we're not a record label. We're not like it's just a movement. That's that's that that was the whole idea when we started. Like we were trying to turn this thing into like a record label. But nah, it's it's too much admin and we all artists at the same time trying like you know, so to hire somebody to be managing. You know, type, yeah, of, type of vibe. So it just became a collective, like we just family, you know. Same way if my little brother right now, if we family, he can decide and you wanna go yeah. wanna go do whatever, then as family I support him. You know, it's it might not be what I'm doing. So that's what Flight Morgan be, be became. Like if, if Dizzy got a project out, we support him, he's family. When Icy got a project out, we support her as she's family, you know, speak. His family type of vibe, you know, so yeah, man, that's just more to the uh, all of it. Yeah, like you guys actually like looking out for each other in terms of projects and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but at this point, like, would you actually like, uh, where do you rate your career at this point? It's the best game of uh, five to ten. Uh, I did, I did what I had to, and I, I think, I think I sparked something on my name not have achieved it you know but i sparked an idea i'm hoping i sparked an idea that you know what i'm saying like put him lower is more to life than just the hood um, but at the same time i got freedom though because this music was more therapy for me than it is for everybody else you know you know when i cap it was really never about the people it, it, it was a nice feeling how we got accepted by the people but for me it was always about just me escaping from whatever the fuck was going on at the time you know? so it freed me from a lot of things and it continues to free me from a lot of things it's my personal diary and but like in, so i cannot break my career as far as <laughs> now <I> thought because <laughs> <laughs> it started that way. I and wanted yeah, it. Yeah, I wanted it to be like you know, yeah. up there. That is like push this as a main career and whatnot. Yeah. It started that way. It started as something that I would want to make a career, you know. Uh -huh. But right now it's like what it started with before. If I wanted it to be a career, which was just an escape. So right now it's coming back. It's like full circle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, so I cannot rate my career because it's not what it is to me anymore. It's just dropping 
music for yeah. five fans that I've got. <laughs> Don't <laughs> you keep on referring to five fans. Because uh? <laughs> when I look at your songs, man, I, once you drop in like less than 10 minutes, there's already, already like 100 views on YouTube. Like, why are you saying this is like five fans? Man? Mm, it's five fans, bro. <laughs> Probably five fans each playing my music to to a good time. That, that's not how it works, though. It's all perspective. It is how it works. Like it could be five people playing the music a hundred times. You know. <laughs> so you don't feel like there's more people that are actually wait for you. No, my reach is definitely. If I like when I looked at my stats when I did sincerely it was true. Yeah. That, like I was getting views, uh, listens from countries I've never been at. You know, yeah. my music has really traveled more than I did. So, yeah, which is, I know for sure there's consistently somebody out there just on a random day play one of my songs, two of my songs. Yes, you know, it's because they so relate, to, of, yeah, relate yeah, to the stories yeah, that you tell. They, 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 you first you listen to the entire music that I put out, then you find your favorites, then you either play this them or you just go back to them every time. Yeah, but you they become like me where I'll just play you, man, whenever I feel like yo. Shit's gonna sound like just play you. I don't know it's gonna yeah. touch me in a different way, it's gonna make me think in a different way. But like um where do you see the your brand in the next five years? Do you see yourself in the mainstream or just wanna keep it um the thing? Uh, it'd be nice to have a song that everybody could get access to that means i would have to be like in the mainstream where i'm getting tv play radio play, play, radio play. play and um everybody's just listening because that means instead of changing the five vibes now i'm changing five uh, hundred, five, yeah. you know what i'm saying so i i would definitely love to get to a place where my music is accessed by a lot more people um other than that though i just want to be comfortable but have you ever tried uh, to put out your music on TV and radio? Or the whole gatekeeping thing was that you stop like when it comes to I don't know fuck, bro. <laughs> I don't know fuck, dog. So you also believe that the whole gatekeeping is not a myth when it comes to you? No, it's also not a myth, bro. If you go through the processes, the, 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 the processes they put online, yeah. Bro, never not succeed. even a response, bro. Not even a how they they didn't, they didn't match the standards or whatever. But I, but I, but I see the stations, most of this um, music uh, channels, they put out a statement that they are against Fayola and you know there's no gatekeeping. They are just email the music and all that. But when I actually talk to a couple of artists, there's nobody who tells me that they emailed the music and they could play. They had to go through Spanban. Who knows Spanban? Which just need a certain portion of an envelope in order for them to get to actually play. So at first I thought it was just some people trying to cut the corners. But then I realized that each and every artist that I have here he talks about the same thing, the gatekeeping and you know, the biola and all those things. Mm. Yeah, but I I don't I don't pay attention to it anymore like that, man. At this point, bro, who, whoever hears the music hears it, who doesn't doesn't, doesn't. But I got the release that I needed when I when I got to the studio and I yelled at that fucking microphone, <laughs> bro. After a bad day, I <laughs> got that the that's that when you're gonna release. Yeah. So you say that people should actually expect your music in the coming year, 2023. That's when you're gonna start yeah, yeah, you push, coming back. You that no, I'm just I'm just asking. Because you say that this year there's no release, nobody's <laughs> getting anything. Uh, but well, at least I got to listen to the exclusives. I don't know about uh, the folks at home. So you say that next year, maybe. I'm not saying shit, bro. <laughs> so it might not wrong. It might not happen, bro. That's <laughs> right. The last project could possibly be the last people hear of me. Then I feel like you stop. It the could music. possibly be a new project that comes, but. Man, I got, I got, I got shit that I got to do. You know, it's just, you know, so these things take different rankings in life, like of importance and whatnot. And over the past couple of years, you know, yeah. with the uh, the yes. more responsibilities you have, the less time you have for music. Yeah, because um, a lot of people don't really understand that once you have 
your nine to five, this family. You need to balance everything, and sometimes you can't find the balance. Like moving, moving people expect moving adulthood to be like okay now now things is gonna be simple. They become the hardest. Yeah. Right? They become the hardest. So I've been taking knocks after knocks, bro. But here I am. Still standing to me, bro. Still standing. Because it, 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 it always the case. People think that once you move, it simply means you're making a lot of money. So now you're gonna start bowling around to see you in Europe. Every show pushing money, not knowing that they still work to be done. Like you still need to put on a lot of work. So like me, bro. But but yeah, man. So can't tell, can't promise, but I do have music. That's good. Music. That might do have music that I recorded recently. Still have music I recorded right. back in the days, dating back to 2018 that hasn't dropped. Um, Damn. Uh, yeah, we'll see if I wake up feeling good. I'll get my district here. So, so it's going to depend on how you feel. Yeah. Then you drop music. Yeah, yeah. But not even one single there, but this year, these two remaining months, one single Nyana. Maybe not this year, but I'll probably drop a single. There's a song I did with Jazzy. Jazzy, Jazzy Beats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm fucking with that vibe at the moment. Like, it's, it's, it's on repeat. So <laughs> I'll probably but, drop that. But are you think of dropping it anytime soon? So that people can get in the same vibe as you? You should join a political party <laughs> with this agenda you're pushing up. <laughs> I ain't dropping, I ain't dropping until I'm ready to drop, so I cannot say when that is it could be tomorrow it could be next week but but they should actually ex expect new music from you uh, or not <laughs> so, <laughs> so, 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 so like there's like 50 50 chance yeah yeah there's like 50 right. chance i want to live though i want to okay. live okay but in closing bro like what would you want to be remembered as for people see me as that's all you want to be Whatever, whatever you see me as, bro. If, if you see me as, as a monster, fuck you. Remember me as that, cause to you, that's what is real to you. You know, I was a monster to you, and that was real to you. Dog. So remember me as that. So yeah, dog. But you I already, cannot choose how I want people to remember me. It's just based on how they view me. How they view you. There you have it, folks. Man, this is another episode of Podcast of Soul. I guess this is part one. We're gonna actually have part two. Cheers. Yeah. When I pull up in the spot, they be asking what I got. Yeah, I swear an extra mile, an extra inch for the time. When I pull up in the spot, 